Welcome back. Today we'll be addressing the top five things you need to avoid when using FlexStand in order to see the fastest results. The first thing we're going to do is avoid hyperextension of the wrist when the arm is in a straight position. The main exercise would be the palm up elbow moving exercise. Here I'm performing the palm up elbow moving exercise. When I reach the bottom position, I'm going down, my finger is going to point straight down towards the floor, I'm going to move up, back and forth, a nice smooth clean controlled manner, spreading my fingers apart and again ending with my fingers pointing towards the floor. I do not want to hyperextend my wrist or bend it back. This can cause a stretch reflex to the nerve and irritate the nerve so do not hyperextend the wrist like this when you are doing any straight arm exercise. If you're In the palm up isolated exercise I can hyperextend my wrist because it will not cause a uh, stretch reflex to the nerve. So I can hyperextend my wrist because the flexor muscles right here are relaxed. They're not you know, already stretched and then being overstretched when I hyperextend. They're in a relaxed state. Now I can go ahead and, and stretch them backwards, extending, hyperextending my wrist without causing any issues. The second issue you want to avoid is I call camping out. When you're performing, let's say, a palm up isolated exercise, I sit here and hold my hand open. And just sit here and sit here because I like to stretch. You don't want to do that. You want to go back and forth in a nice, smooth, controlled manner. Here I'm performing the palm up isolated exercise. If I'm doing the palm up elbow moving exercise, again, more people are likely to do this when they move down into the straight position, fingers pointing towards the floor, they spread their fingers apart and just sort of just sit down there because it feels good. You don't want to do this. In a sense, it actually causes the extensor muscles to relax and you fatigue slower than you would by moving through a nice, smooth, clean position from flexion to extension and back, taking more than, no more than two seconds per repetition. The third issue is going too slow. A lot of people are moving really slow, and extending their wrist and coming back and going really, really slow. You don't want to do that. It's not two seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. Moving back and forth, the same speed, controlled. Okay, that's where you're going to reach your fatigue levels. fourth issue is where people don't spread their fingers apart all the way. I'm extending my wrist, but not really opening my hand at all. Especially when people get fatigued. See how my fingers are all just sort of sitting together? You want to make sure that whether you're performing a palm up isolated, any of the exercises, palm up elbow moving, or I'm moving through a complete range of motion, that I am spreading my fingers apart right from the beginning of the exercise. Spreading them apart. So by the time I'm halfway through the motion right here, my fingers, my hands completely open. Open and extension all the way down. Open all the way down and then the reverse. Making sure you get your fingers spread apart all the way. The, next the fifth element we want to address is ulnar deviation. You have a lot of range of motion and ulnar deviation and not so much in radial deviation. Here I am in a palm up position. Look at my ulnar deviation. Watch my radial deviation. Barely, just minimal degrees. But what happens is a lot of people, as I'm extending my wrist and fingers, I drift. See right here? I'm drifting. The ulnar deviators are already really, really tight, especially with people with cubital tunnel syndrome. They really want to be aware of this. Guillain syndrome. You want to really be aware of this because the ulnar group here, which causes ulnar deviation, which is already tight, the flexor group and ulnar deviators cause compression here at the elbow junction and compress the cubital tunnel, as well as here at the Guillain's canal. So in any of the exercises though, try to maintain a nice straight neutral wrist. Here I am, extending my wrist, to see how I'm keeping midline, midline, I'm not drifting over to the side and to ulnar deviation. The only thing you're doing is yes you're ex exercising your extensors and finger abductors but you're also 
exercising your ulnar deviators and you're making them stronger, tighter, shorter, and compressing these two joints. So beware of these five elements and you will recover much, much faster. Thank you very much and we will address some uh, more issues um, in the future. If you have questions about specific things or would like to see a troubleshooting tip on, you know, on a particular subject, uh, certainly send me a private email and let me know. Thank you.